All right. Average Nobodies, we're back. Um, for those of you who don't know that are listening, a.k.a. Justine and Mike D, Lindy, it's very exciting news. Lindy is pregnant. That's that's the that We're going to kick it off right there with the cold open. Lindy is pregnant. A baby boy is being delivered August 24th or so, the doctors say. I don't believe them, though. No, you can never never trust those medicine men. No. So it either yeah, could be uh, either could be a Tommy Pag's birthday or a Chris Cotterelli birthday. Ooh. Right around there. Very so. exciting. Congratulations, Matt. Thank you. Yes, and you guys obviously already know, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'm very nervous. It's uh scary shit. And uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So we'll see. <laughs> well, hopefully I figure it out. It's just a very long game of trial and error. Yeah. Jen so you'll you'll be fine. So I'm being told Jen's friend Audrey is like she's pregnant right now and she is like actively trying to have the baby like she was she's been trying to be uh you know trying to have the baby um and you know you know I hope for her sake it you know she's not uncomfortable anymore and it comes out happy and healthy but my birthday is also in a couple of days and Do it would be like cool to have the same birthday clench it for next Tuesday maybe you never know it could yeah. happen Hey. I was really hoping I was I was hoping Lenny would would be on my birthday, but you know the same release date as Zack Snyder's Justice League is a it's good compromise. a pretty good a pretty good compromise right. yeah one of the greatest birthdays out there. <laughs> so it is so it is agreed that whoever's birthday it lands on gets naming rights right. That's, that's or at true. least that's what Tom thinks. Yes, so, you have to. Yeah, like you got 365 days out of the year, and boom, you nail your own. Like, right. come on, pretty good. Don't Connor's brothers have the same birthday? Yes. But a year apart or two years apart or something. That does sound like something that would happen yeah. in the Levy family. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it 100% does. Um, so, yeah, so that's exciting. Uh, I'd want to let Justine and Mike D know, our, 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 uh, our dedicated listeners. Uh, we also have a new listener. I was just telling Adam, guy I do a podcast with on Mondays. It's his podcast, Justin. Um, he came in on Monday and usually we just shoot the shit about shit he wants to talk about. And all of a sudden he had all this stuff to talk about average nobodies. Ooh. He's been like binging our episodes. Nice. What does he think? He loves it. And he was, well, he was upset at a few drafts, obviously, like people like hit us up on Twitter and they're like, oh, you missed this one. You missed this one. You missed this one. But oh, he, uh, he loves our show. He thinks that, and I really hate to say this on tape, but he really thinks the podcast got better since Justine has been coming in studio and recording oh. us. She thinks that he thinks that like she does, truly, she like keeps us on the straight and narrow. Yeah. Which is bullshit. She does a little she does more homework than we do yeah. as well. Right. And that's he, he also he also mentioned that, yeah. I so. I definitely I uh thinking about my picks for the Christmas draft, I definitely dropped the ball <laughs> on some of my picks. And what a sin it was that none of us did Friday after next. Yeah. As a pick. That's a great Christmas movie. Yeah, and I had just recently watched those at the time, too, and I just... Missed them. Yeah, it just happens. Missed them. It happens. Um, some other stuff going on in my life right now. I'm realizing that there's way too many handicapped spots in the world. Okay. I'm going to die on this hill. I don't know if I brought this up before. This might be something I already brought up before, but <laughs> I've been... In my <laughs> We've got a lot of issues with, with driving and <laughs> the aspects of driving. I've been... Um, in between, like, working at the marina and doing some other shit, in my free time, I've been doing DoorDash when I'm bored. Nice. Just delivering some food for people. It's super fucking easy. Like, it is, n like, the saying is it's not rocket science. That <laughs> it doesn't even do it justice. Like, it is so fucking easy to do. But anyway, but going up to all these restaurants and picking up food for people, you can't park within 50 feet of the front door. It's all handicap spots. And there no, there's never anybody in them. Yeah. And I'm... I'm, it needs to be cut back. There's also now at CVS, they have, and this is going to be, well, <laughs> anyway, there's handicapped spots, and then there's, like, spots for pregnant women, whatever. It, it, like, like, listen, I, like, I get it. I totally get it. We need to, it, like, I understand you need the spots up front. There's too many. There's too many spots. There's too many spots. You got, well, you should just, I'll die on this hill. I don't shop. care. You know what you should but do? You go, to a, uh, go ahead, Ryan. Sorry. I was going to say, you go to a stop and shop, not only do you have the handicap spots, now you have all the Peapod pickup spots. Ugh. You can't, get, you can't oh. get within 10 spots of the front door. That's the other thing, too. Like, Best Buy still, they all have these made-up spots for when the pandemic was at, like, its peak. Right. And they were doing, like, pickup things. Every, and, like, they would come out and give you your shit. That is no longer in service. But I'm not a terrible person, so I won't just park in one of those spots. Because what if it is, and I'm the dude that, pay, that paid for shit online, and I'm like, oh, I'll just go and pick it up Best Buy. I don't have to get out of my car. Yeah. And I fuck him over, yeah. or him or her over. I'm not going to do that, so I won't park there. But you need, you need, we need to update 
parking lot. But yeah. Listen, you should just be able to park wherever you want. Wherever you want. As if, close as you want. If I can get up on the sidewalk at Best Buy and park <laughs> right there and there's nobody around, <laughs> that's where I want to park. Right. Park in front of the bike rack. Nobody right. rides their bikes. I'm going to jam my car right up to the curb. <laughs> and that's where I'm going to park. Forget about picking up anything in Providence. Oh, my God. First of all, it's like we've never seen snow before. Snow removal is just not a thing. They just they just pile it up. Right. You can't park anywhere. No. Um, the, uh, the Target near me in Plainville is like that with the parking lot. There are so, like you, you, like you said, you can't get, with, get within 20 spots of the front door. And it's all the best spots, too. Yeah. It's not like the ones in between the doors. No, it's the best spots. Yeah. So you're parking way back and in the middle of the two entrances. It's a, it's a huge pain in the ass. Mm. Um, what my, my dad, like I, you know, him and I did a lot of projects at my house this fall. And, uh, you know, he would like to, when we had to, you know, you do a project, you can't do a project without running to Lowe's or Home Depot once or twice right. when you're doing the project. So and, low side. Right. And so every time he we'd take his truck because, you know, he's got to secretly rip a couple SIGs on the ride there and back. <laughs> My mom won't notice. And he just, he pull he, every time he pulls into the contractor parking spots, he's like, I'm like, Dad, can you park here? He's like, yeah, I'm a contractor. I work for Jim. Like, yeah, but I'm sure like you need to have like like be a member of them. He's like, oh fuck them. I'll park wherever I want. <laughs> Just, I like that's vague enough where he could get away with it. You yeah. Know? He, yeah. Technically he's a contractor. Now, technically. Now it's become I've been doing it for well, I did it a, a few times last year, but I've been doing it for the last couple of weeks. And now it's just become where I park to like go in and get the food has become like a math equation. Have I been to this place before? Is the food going to be ready as soon as I go in and just grab the bag and be out? Right. Or am I going to have to wait? Then the second thing that comes into equation, is there no spots? Okay, there's no spots. If I park in this spot, will I get a, will I get a ticket or will my car get towed in the time that it's inside? Towed, probably not. I'm not at any no. spot for long enough. But a ticket, maybe. So I check out down, down the roads. There's no meter maids coming up and down. And sometimes I'll just throw the hazards on and leave it, like, literally in the middle of the street. Like, Thayer Street, I, it, was, it was almost like I was driving down Thayer Street. It was just right in the middle of Thayer Street. And there was, it was a dead part of the day. It was, like, just after the, the lunch rush, but before rush hour. And, mm -hmm. like, I just there was nobody on Thayer Street, so I just threw it. I ran to Shake Shack, grabbed what I needed. Car was still in the middle of the street. Someone was just coming up behind me. I hopped in, took off. Oh, I, 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 I always forget that there's one on. Their street. I love yeah. Shake Shack. And it's always a it's always it's always hell to park over there now because every single there's no parking lots anymore. It's just nope. student housing. Right. The, the whole east side of Providence is either um the like houses, like the big houses, mm -hmm. or student apartment buildings. That's all the east side is now. And right. Thayer Street. That's it. Anyway. What do you guys got going on? It's been a while. Ryan, you go. I'm sure your <laughs> life is a little more eventful than mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm moving. We bought a new house. Whoa, that's news. Oh, did I? I didn't tell you, right, Matt? No. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, so we signed the PNS, um, last week or, or, yeah, last week, and we accepted an offer on our house. So tentative closing is April 8th for both. Nice. Uh, but I believe it'll be a little earlier. We're hoping to close, like, Midweek, I think the eighth is a uh, a Friday. So are you going to be moved out? Close. Are you going to be moved out by then? Yeah, yeah. but not into um, the new place. No. So the plan is so actually the house we bought is um, the people right now live in Florida, but they've already per bought a condo in North Smithfield, so they haven't like been in their house for a while. So we, I mean, we could close with them today. And then move into their house, but the people who are buying our house still have to close on their property. Mm. Um, so we're just waiting for that part to finish, and then we can close on ours, and, and then close on new house same day, and uh, move in. So we're hoping to be actually moved in by the week of the eighth of April eighth. Nice, so very, very, nice. very exciting. Yeah, finally got this. It's a great house. I, I do love this house. I love the location, but shit just like keeps <laughs> keeps happening it's it's an older house and if it's not the plumbing it's the furnace if it's not the furnace it's you know we have well water it's something with that so um we actually had an issue where all of a sudden like we got the the basement renovated and i go down and the, like a ceiling tile like water's going through the ceiling tile 
Ugh. I'm like, you fucking kidding? Like, we just got it done. We just got vinyl flooring down there. So what's what happened was we had a plumber come, and it's like this old um, like system under the sink, but it goes from PVC to copper to PVC to copper to P- it's just like mosh posh together. Yeah, just Every, patched everything. Together, yeah. Yeah, the previous owners did was just a Band-Aid, and it's like, you know, it's an 80- or 70-year-old house, so it's just kind of coming back to bite us now. Mm. But one of the plumbers who came, he's like, you know, you can't put can't put any food down the sink. I'm like, yeah, I mean, we don't. Like, we clean the place and stuff. He goes, no food. Pasta? No. Rice? No. I'm like, buddy, I don't, I'm not throwing food down my sink. <laughs> Steak? <laughs> Steak? No. You're just naming yeah. food now, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so, um I'm like, I, I, you know, we don't, it's a, it's a sink, you know, there's not like a huge plug for it to go down, but some food is going to escape. Like, I'm sorry that the pipe can't handle like a speck of pasta or oatmeal. So anyway, we're very excited. So uh, it's in Smithfield I, as well. Uh, North Smithfield. Nice. Give the exact well, address funny, on the podcast. No. <laughs> funny, funny enough. Guess who we're neighbors with? Mike D. No. Oh, oh, uh, Christina Cito. Yeah. Oh, really? Sister. Yeah. How, how, Simone. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> um, like le- legit, like when we go, I go out into my backyard. Like that's the house I see. Oh, really? Got to wow. re- Got to reignite yeah. that is, blood it, feud. It, it, yeah. <laughs> that rivalry. The cool thing is though, like she, her son, is uh, four or five, and he actually has the same birthday as Lenny. Oh, and cool. And then her youngest son is. Um, five months older than Lenny. So it'll, it'll kind of be nice to know not only someone like adults in the neighborhood, but kids that'll be like Lenny's age growing up. So nice. Just kind of a huge, a win-win. And the people buying our house are super cool. And they're actually, it's, it's eerie. They're kind of, they're very similar to us, like the position Holly and I were in when we bought this house. Uh, they're engaged. They're getting married June 26th of this year. Oh. When Holly and I bought the house, we got engaged and got married on June 23rd. Yeah. Um, the guy's name's Ryan. Um, he's a landscape architect, just like Adam. Wow. So. Dead end. <laughs> did you, uh, did you tell him not to put any food down the sink? <laughs> I said, look, pasta? <laughs> no. You have a huge list? Like, no. It's like, well, sir, we're funny. not buying, we're not going to buy this house now. <laughs> yeah. He's like, we have to eat. <laughs> <laughs> just throw it in the street. Just, yeah. Uh, all in the trash. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I know you guys are trying Thank for a you. long time, so that's great. You guys are moving on to new house. New it's house, new house is significantly house. younger, I assume, than the than the house you're in now. Yeah, it's like uh, 25 years younger. Um, it was built in the mid 80s. One owner. It's just two owners. Two owners. That's not um, bad. But the the owner. Yeah, so owner from like '83 to the late '90s, and then the owners who were buying it from like grew up, you know, raised their family in there. They're in their '70s now. Yeah, but it's like space-wise, it is everything we were looking for. It's a one-floor like executive ranch. So every there's no stairs. Everything's on one floor. It's just all spaced out. Nice. Um, it's it's gorgeous. So um, they have the owners have much more. Uh, expensive taste than we had but a lot of the stuff they're just leaving like i don't know how much money these people had but they lived in florida and they bought a condo in north smithfield none of that was relying on them selling this house that was just empty (laughs) so uh, they just had like three properties two in rhode island two in north smithfield one in florida and they were you know they were so casual about selling they didn't want to do an open house it's like i don't know how much money they had but it must have been a lot that's crazy that's awesome yeah Great. Oh, big time, big time upgrade. So very excited. Oh, excellent. Adam, you yeah. have anything new going on? How about you, Adam? Um, so recently, uh, Jen was not having fun at her previous job, so she got a new job, which uh, you know she's very excited about, and I'm excited for her. It's awesome. Congratulations um, to Jen. So now she uh, works from home, you know, you know, 40 hours a week. She's always there. Wow. So that's a big change for you. <laughs> a big change for me. Wow. Damn. You must, you must want to go <laughs> in the office so now. Call up National Gritty. Is the office still available? So uh, we have a, a home office. Please. We have a, like a home office. We have desks in there, and I've essentially been removed from the home office. I do all my work from the living room now. Damn. Because apparently I breathe too loudly, and no I hold respect. my breath, and I no respect. drink my coffee mm. weird. And But no, it's great. It's cool that... That she she's enjoying what she's doing now. Like she's uh, on the client side, 
of yeah. event planning. Event Con- yeah. Planning now. Mm-hmm. Um, not she's not strapped to you know a building, which is cool, and she gets to she'll get to travel like five or six times a year, and um, you know I'm gonna hop on some of those trips yeah. for a free hotel and Sweet. you know explore and do whatever you know hang around. Like I think she's going to Chicago and Seattle and Vegas a few times nice. this year. So that's awesome. I'll get to do a little bit of traveling myself, yeah. which will be cool. Yeah. Um, she's like her events. Like I know one of her events. She is is like a a Star Wars convention. I'm sorry, Star Trek convention. But her company also does a Star Wars convention, which I'm really hoping she gets put on because I'll that's definitely sweet. go to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And then some other boring ones. And then the, what? Oh, I can't remember. Dragon Con? Yeah, something? Dragon Con. That's in, uh, that's in Indianapolis. Right? Yeah, something like that. Dra- they do. Well, I don't know if it's in Indianapolis. It was a couple years ago. That's like a big uh, cosplay sh- right. show. So it's like, they have that one that's as like the, well. People go all out yeah. for that one. Maybe I'll go dress up. There are real as, dragons there? Yes, yes, I think so. Yes, that's the whole draw. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited for her. I but kill as, people. as far as as far as me personally, <laughs> that sounds dangerous. <laughs> it is. That's why Jen works from home. She can't, she can't be with the dragon. She's training. Oh, that's, that's tra- see, <laughs> it all makes sense. Hey, working from home, that's where it's at. I know some people can't do it, but my oh, God, I love, I love it so much. I love working from home. It's great. Sweet. Great. I put on jeans today just to like, you know. <laughs> feel like a human. Like, I've been in sweatpants. I've been in sweatpants for so many consecutive days. So I like got up, you know, put on like a quarter zip, some jeans. But nice. Got all dolled up. Well, up. I, I felt pretty. Yeah, I felt productive. One, once in a while, I'll put on like a like a button down shirt with sweatpants on underneath. Like if I like, oh, I've got a meeting with not just my immediate group members, yeah, and right. I have to be on video. I'll throw a shirt on, so I look somewhat presentable. Nice. Nice. But yeah, that's, that's really it for me. Cool. All right. Welcome to the Average Nobody's Podcast, number 137 for March 2nd, 2022. First one of this year. Yep. How does this year feel for everybody besides the pandemic, World War Three, all that type of shit? Feels good, right? 2022? Feels like we're in the future. I'm going to... I'm just going to throw this out there. When we were doing podcasts consistently, there was no war. That's true. So That's maybe true. maybe this is a, it's up to us. Take a couple months off and, <laughs> and the, you know, this is what all happens. of a sudden is we're on the brink of world war. <laughs> I, just, I mean, there's got to be a correlation, right? Yeah. Am I looking too much into this? No, I, th- I think I think you're on to something. So we need to stick to this. And well, maybe it's that Justine hasn't podcast with us in a while, too. Because also yeah, when we were podcasting, just the three of us, a pandemic did start. That's true. <laughs> so. Yeah, that is very true. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so, all right. Let's get into it. It's time for everyone's favorite game show, Celebrity Birthdays. Who is it? Who is it? Uh, so I have the honor of doing Celebrity Birthdays this week. Um, just as a quick your 2022 reminder, uh, the score updates. <laughs> Matt has 54. Ryan has 69.5. Uh, Adam has 70.5. Mitch has 5. Derek with 0.5. And Justine at 6. Okay. So those okay. are our tallies for everybody that's ever participated in the celebrity <laughs> birthday games. Uh, I'm going to need you guys to keep track of your, you know, how many points you get okay. this time around. Okay. And um, and I will update the – well, how are we going to do this? Because Ryan's – I can't see Ryan. Uh, we're doing calls. We're doing calls? Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. Call. Ryan, give me your call. Call. <laughs> Matt. Call. Okay. Ryan's got the deep, Big difference. long one, and Matt has the the problem. Short, the problem one. that might arise is that – Is the delay? Yeah. Ryan might be a little delay, mm. which would be a problem. So but – I've been – I've been on Dayquil and Nyquil the last three days, so I can't imagine I'm going to get many. Well, a little foggy. Yeah. If I don't, if I don't do an immediate call, I'm not getting it. So hopefully that won't bother. Hopefully it won't. It won't. <laughs> imagine, imagine we just <laughs> neither one of us no one do says it. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's that do it. Happened before with Adam. That's that's true. <laughs> how, wait, yeah. So how was today? How was? Uh, the, pretty good. Okay. Two, three, pretty good. Four, that's five, not, five, not a six, vote of confidence. I've got seven. Seven for today. <laughs> Vote of no confidence. Well, I did ones that I didn't. I didn't go. My New Year's resolution for 2022 specifically <laughs> has been to not convince myself that 
you know, these weird character actors that we've seen in one or two things will be able to be guessed from a shitty clue that I come up with. Right, that we don't know Charlie Chap- Chaplin's, like, manager. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> going through this rapper slash actor's filmography. Fuck. <laughs> Wait. Uh, oh, right. Filmography. He either plays a criminal or a cop in all of his features. Cool. And going by all uh, one of our all-time favorite shows, that's because cheese rules everything around me. Matt. Iced tea? It's not iced tea. Oh, uh, Ryan? Cheese. Wait, cheese. Cheese rules everything around me. One of our all-time favorite TV shows. This ra- rapper slash actor. Correct. And you know him from one of your favorite oh. TV shows. Okay, we got Ryan. Ryan. Uh, I'm just going to get ludicrous. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this character. Uh, read it again, read it again, read it again. Going through this rapper slash actor's filmography, he either plays a criminal or a cop uh, in all of his features and going by one of our favorite TV shows. That's because cheese rules everything around me. C R E A M. Cash rules everything around. Yeah, no, I do know that. Oh. oh. Ryan. No, I don't know. Method Man? Yes, it's Method Man. <laughs> che- he was cheese in the wire. Oh, see, I didn't, I didn't know that. Oh. I, didn't, I didn't get that far. Does he, where, where does he play a cop? You couldn't do one pit my ride? In a bunch of stuff. I as, as I finished reading it, I was like, how did I not work how high into this? Oh, pit my ride. He did pit my ride? That exhibit. was a exhibit. This that is Method exhibit. Man. Oh, fuck. Why did I, I literally heard you say exhibit. No. That's definitely not true, but my brain interpreted it as that. Okay. <laughs> All right. How old is Method Man today? It's actually his real name, too. Mm. Is he my baby's daddy? He is in my baby's daddy. That's right. <laughs> Anthony Anderson's cousin or something. Yeah. Um, che- Cheese Wagstaff, right? Yeah. In the wire? Melvin uh, Cheese I'm gonna, Wagstaff. I'm going to say Method Man today is... Uh, 50. Okay. I'm going to say he's... Forty-seven. Oof. Method Man is fifty-one. Wow! Oh, Just wow. missed them. Wow! Sorry, Charlie. So that's wow. one point for Ryan. Wow! <clears throat> one point for Ryan. Oh, I'm not keeping track. You keep track of yours, Ryan. Always cast yeah, as yeah. always cast as a slacker. This workaholic has recently broken his trend of one-off appearances on sitcoms to be woke himself. Call oh. Ryan. Blake Anderson? It's Blake Anderson. What is he on now? That show Woke with, um, what's his face from, it's on Hulu, I've never seen it, but it's, uh, the guy from, uh, Lamar, Winston, Lamar Morris Winston from New Girl. From New Girl. Yeah. Uh, okay. And he was in that episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine I watched the other day. He plays Amy's ex-boyfriend, the, the singer. Oh right, he's got, right. Like, all the scarves. Right. So yeah. the, going through his things, like really, those are the only two things he's in, other than like one-off appearances and like Modern Family and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so how old's Blake Anderson today? Uh, I'm gonna say Blake Anderson is 37. Okay. I'm gonna say he's 35. Blake Anderson is 38. <laughs> Oh, damn, Ryan. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> Especially like for not having any idea how old they are. I'd rather be way off. <laughs> well, I can't remember. I wish I could remember one of the ones, <laughs> some of the ones we've been way off on. Oh, Those are uh, always funny. Someone someone was off. We like we guessed it. It was like someone was in their 80s, but they were, they were dead and they were like 114. They <laughs> yeah, were like 100. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she got her start in America with a brief appearance. A brief, uh, okay, she got her start in America with a brief appearance on a show with another celebrity whose birthday is today. Made a pitch perfect performance with another actor from that Aww. same show and hustled her way to a future with <sighs> Anne Hathaway. Ryan. Rebel Wilson? It is Rebel Wilson. He, 
looks like Matt took the NyQuil today. I mean, I mean, the first third of that riddle or half of that riddle, there's no possible way anybody could get it. That's why you got to listen to the whole thing. Yeah, but the only one it was like it was like someone who shared a birthday. So it was Blake Anderson, right? Because he was in. It could have been Method Man, right? But but it could have also been someone you didn't say yet. It, but I, I purposely did it so it was right after Blake. Okay. Uh, how old's Rebel Wilson today? Uh, I'm gonna say she's. See, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to <laughs> be one it. one under again. Yeah, I'm gonna say 35. Okay, 33. Ooh, Rebel Wilson's 42. Damn, what the Dude. fuck? Way off. Wow, way off. Way off. All right. Shit. I think the... It sounds uh, so old, but it's not that much older than us. It's not that much older, but I def- I didn't think she was 10 years older than Right. Us. Yeah, that's fair. The, the rest are, are better written. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't like, follow that last one. You like this one. <laughs> Had a stroke halfway through it. <laughs> <laughs> Before he started slinging sh- electric Chevy trucks... This junior pain in the ass could never escape the wrath of New Jersey's most famous mobster. Call. Matt. <laughs> is, it, <sighs> is it Corrado? Soprano? No. Wait, say, that, say it again? Fuck. Before he started oh. <laughs> slinging electric Chevy trucks, I know it this is. junior pain in the ass could never escape the wrath of New Jersey's most famous mob boss. Ryan. Call. Oh. Robert Eiler? It is Robert Eiler, a.k.a. Uh, Anthony Soprano, AJ Soprano. Jr., oh, A.J. Soprano. Fuck. Uh, I will say that was kind of like a that was like a very sentimental commercial with him and Meadow. Yeah, yeah that was good. That's a good one. Uh, how old is Robert Eiler today? Oh, man. He's got to be like around our age, right? I don't know. I'm not telling you. I'm going to say 36. Okay. Um... 36. I'm gonna, when did the Sopranos start? 99. 99? Hmm. I feel like he was around, you know, around like 11, 12 years old. It seems like it. <laughs> what did you say, Ryan? <laughs> 30, 36. I'm going to say he's 35. He's 37. Oh, my God. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh that sucks. I, I was looking at, I was looking oh. at uh, AJ Soprano clips today to try to, like, have a funny one in there that you guys would notice. And the one I came across, like, one that I was laughing at was the one where <clears throat> uh, Tony and Carmela, I can't remember who it was, but had a woman over and their baby. And she, you know, Carmela made his favorite dinner, and he comes down the stairs talking about pesticides and shit, <laughs> <laughs> and about how, um, you know, they they bury the animals and you know they pollute the area, and they don't even care. Tony goes, "Well, won't you go over? I'll bury your head in that fucking wall." <laughs> <laughs> and we were thinking about how, like, Jen and I were thinking about how, you know, we laugh at that because we think it's hilarious. But how many people watch? They're like, "Oh my god, I can't believe oh, no. he said my that." My dad would say something like that. <laughs> exactly. My dad would say something like that to me. But my my favorite AJ quote is the one where they're out by the pool. It's like one of the first episodes. <laughs> and he goes, "It's something like, uh, um, it was his birthday party, and Tony's mother decided she wasn't gonna come over, and like he was, Tony was having a fit, and and AJ comes outside and he goes, oh what." No fucking CD. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, the mouth. No fucking CD. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Please, I need redemption. Do you have another one? Yeah, I've got three more. Okay, all right. Uh, the right-hand woman under the brief mad queen of Westeros, this actress's career looks to be on a fast and furious track to more <sighs> blockbusters. Fuck me. I know... <sighs> Oh. Ryan. I know, I know. Uh, I, I can't think of the character. I don't know the actress's name. Oh, oh. Nat- Natalie Emmanuel? That, I will accept Natalie Emmanuel. It's Nathalie. Nath- Emmanuel. Nath- Natalie Emmanuel. <laughs> but I will accept okay. Natalie. She's, what's her character in Fast and Furious? Ramsey. Ramsey. Fuck me. Um, how old is Natalie Emmanuel today? What's the point in guessing? I'm going to be off by one. <laughs> Uh, I bet she's I'm gonna say she us. is. Yeah, I was thinking that too. I'm gonna say 32. Hmm. I'm gonna say she, she's 
fuck. I'm going to say she's 31. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. No, what is it? Is it no way? <laughs> she's 33. <laughs> oh, that's, that's no. Four. That's oh, four. No. All right, I got two left. Imagine um, if you didn't take the night call. I know. I might have to take this every day. <laughs> uh, even though, uh, so this actress has the possibility to be a Spider Verse love interest of Peter Parker, but today she's most known for her intergalactic directing credits and her high heeled oh, sprints from Jurassic go, go. Predators. Matt. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. It is Bryce Dallas Howard. He's on the board. Gwen Stacy. Um, you like that one? I did like that one. That was a good one. That was a good one. She could get in there. I was like, I was flipping through Spider-Man Love Interest. That would be amazing. Imagine if right? she, they fit her into like Morbius. She works for Disney now. It's true. Uh, how old is BDH? I love her. Also, she has like the best Mandalorian episodes. Um, I'm going to say she is... Oh, fuck. She's... 40. Okay. Yeah, 40. Ryan? I'm going to say 38. <laughs> Is it not? No. <laughs> She's 41. Oh, no! <laughs> this the, is unbelievable. The curse has been passed. Uh, okay. This is insane. Last, last one. <clears throat> so, he conquered the film version of every 90s boy's video game crush before solving crimes as a Swedish journalist, a smooth-talking oh. southern detective, and Britain's favorite secret agent. Ryan. Call, call Daniel Craig. It is Daniel Craig. And I'm referring to the very first Lara Croft Tomb Raider movie where he was the guy. You know what? I don't even remember that. That boned her. Yeah. I don't even remember that. Either. He was, yeah, he was in there. You said. That's a good riddle. I sure. forget he's in that movie. Um, how old is Daniel Craig today? This is the last one. Last chance at redemption. Either be way off or get it. Both of you. 80. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to say he's 57. Okay. I'm going to say he's 55. He is 54. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> so one off. So we had Whoa. five one offs today. God damn That's it. insane. I could have been in double digits on this one round. What'd you get? I got six points. Ryan yeah, got, yeah, you Ryan got six and Matt got one. I will Just update one. the spreadsheet. And that is it for Celebrity Birthdays. All right. Thank That's it for this episode's edition of Celebrity Birthdays. Who was it? Who was it? And now a word from our sponsor. Go see the Batman. That's our spon that's our sponsor this week. Oh, I can't wait. Also, friend of mine, Brent, just put out his first rap EP called Vibin' and Dying. Whoa. Stream that. It's on Apple Music and it's on Spotify. And a lot of other places too. But yeah, Vibin' and Dying with the Ampersand. <laughs> Um, Ryan shot out to a five point lead. In I'm the sorry, standings. I let you down. I, I, I let him, I let him run away with all those points. That's okay. So I'm over here, like, with I don't know, with a blood clot in my head or something. <laughs> oh my god. Um, okay, are we drafting first? Yeah, I think we'll draft first and okay. then we'll finish up with what we're watching. I think we'll probably have a pretty large, a lot of stuff to talk about what we're watching. So let's draft. Um, this week's draft, uh, we're gonna do our picks. For the best movies that were that did not win Best Picture, but were nominated, but were nominated, yes, correct. But so like, nominated. yes. So if we think that this picture should have won that year instead of another one, that's kind of like what we're at right now. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, so I had some of those, and then I had some where I just really liked same. the movie. Like same. I'm not mad that it didn't win, but yeah. Okay. All right. So who's going first? Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's pull up the wheel. Oh God. <laughs> um, shit, because I don't have my hat. Random wheel. Wheeldecide.com. That's what we're going to do. What the fuck? No, that's, that's bad. Random name. Random number generator. Okay. We're going to do a random number generator. It's going to be one, minimum one, max three. Adam, pick a number between one and three. One. Ryan, pick a number between one Two. and three. Two. And I am three. It is one. Yes. 
Yes. So it'll go Adam, and then it'll go Computer Ryan, because he's on Skype, and then it'll go me. So one, two, three, <laughs> and then because we'll go that counterclockwise motion we usually do. Okay, so my select for my – so I didn't – this was in year 2015. I did not see the best picture this year. The best picture was Spotlight, which I've heard has been, is great. But my pick is Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah. I was recently – I was with, hanging out with my friend Tim recently. We were talking about our top fives. And I was, like, racking my brain trying to come up with my top fives. And, uh, you know, Interstellar's in there for me. The Dark Knight is in there for me. Um, we Own the Night is in there. And then I just happened the next day, Mad Max Fury Road was on TV. And I was like, fuck, I love this movie. And it's I was like, movie. it's in my top five. So Mad Max Fury Road. Like, it's nonstop, start to end, um, entertaining. And it's not, like, overly long. Um, the action sequences are insane. Like, I don't know, you know, all the movies have color filters and stuff on them. But, like, I feel like the color filter... Of like a deeper, like a, a the reddish filter adds a lot to it because like recently I've been watching Ozark and has like sort of a blue filter. Yeah. But like for that type of movie, the red like really brings up the intensity. You got to watch it in black and black and chrome. Right. I've never seen it in black it's and chrome. So the black and chrome edition, it's so fucking. Is that cool. on Netflix? It is on Netflix. All right. Yes. So I know and what Netflix I'm doing is back tomorrow. up. <laughs> yes. Watch it. It's so fucking cool. They do because it's not. For those you don't know, black and chrome is a black and white version of Mad Max Fury Road. But it's not just a black and white filter thrown on it. It is mastered for this black and white. Okay. It's like so like Logan. Like Logan was yes, mastered for right. black and white. It is like it's more. It's less about the white, the blacks and the whites. It's more about the gray. Like okay. in the way the sh they shade everything. It's so fucking cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, that was yes. on my list as well. So one of my favorites. I wanted to get it out there. There's another one, which I'm sure is going to go before my next turn comes back that I wanted. But Mad Max Fury Road number one overall pick. Ryan? Let's see. So I'm going to start off with just like, I'm not mad that it didn't win Best Picture, but it is just one of my favorite overall movies. So I'm going to pick it as my first round pick, and that is uh, Silver Linings Playbook. Ooh, hey, Ryan loves Silver um, Linings It's a great Lines movie. It was, it's on my list yeah. as well. Any Given Day could be my favorite movie. Uh, of all time I just love rewatching it mm. uh, I think it's just pretty much a perfect movie uh, 2013 it was nominated Argo won that year I'm not going to argue that it should have beat Argo but it was nominated it's one of my favorite movies so that's it's an easy first round pick for me I'm going to go with Silver Linings Playbook I I didn't end up going Silver Linings Playbook was on my list but I my whole list is under the impression that I would have to knock out the number one and Argo is the the drama and the in, the uh, suspense in Argo oh, yeah. is something that no other movie can replicate. Like it, there's very few yeah. movies that have that type of suspense in it. So I had to leave Argo there. But I love Silver Linings Playbook is one of my favorite movies. Um, great pick. So that's it. Yeah, man, you sort of handcuffed yeah. yourself here. What do you mean? No, well, I mean I I I have a list. Okay. So I'm not. I, I my list will get off. Um, so for number one, I was it'll get off. Uh, I'm sticking with it. I'm gonna go with 20, um, 2016. Damn it! Ryan and I were recording a podcast right wait, 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 after the Oscars in my basement at Metcalf Avenue, and we literally hit record the second after they announced the Best Picture winner, which was La La Land. Oh. Then that old son of a bitch, whatever the hell his name is, fucked up when it was actually Moonlight that won. Yep. So I would like to go back and fix the record and put La La Land in as the best picture that year. This was one of the years where I saw all of the best picture nominees. And La La Land, by far, was the, the greatest achievement in cinema that year. As far as all these other ones, Lion, pretty good. Manchester by the Sea, you want to cry yourself to sleep, go watch that. Hidden Figures, very uplifting. Hell or High Water, oh. Ty Sheridan, fucking incredible movie. Good movie. It, none movie. of them touch Arrival. Arrival, yeah. one of the greatest modern science fiction movies. Yep. It just a fact. The way they tell that story and the way they use um, linguistics, it is... It hits on so many levels with sci-fi. It's great. 
It doesn't touch the achievement of La La Land, the choreography, the music, the acting. All of it is there, and it's set in this, like, everybody, like, fawns over the golden era of, of Hollywood. And it talks about, it's not during that era, it's modern, but it talks about the classic struggle of a musician and an actress trying to make it in Hollywood, which is the classic storyline. And it's fantastic. You guys both have seen it? I've never seen it. You've never seen it? But I, I have seen Moonlight. I really liked Moonlight. Well, it's all right. <laughs> it's, uh, no, Moonlight is good. La La Land was so good. The music is fantastic. Nothing misses. Nothing on that soundtrack misses. And it's just so... F Ryan Gosling is so it's good. Delightful. It's just delightful. The dancing is yeah. so fucking good. It's, I'll, have to, I'll, have, I'll have to watch that. Like, I liked Moonlight, but like Moonlight stuck with me for a while Moonlight, after Moonlight's I watched heavy. it. I was like crushed for that. That kid watching that movie. Wait, so sure. Were you more crushed than when, <laughs> when Casey Affleck meets up with his ex-wife on the streets of Manchester, New Hampshire? Oh, I, I didn't see that. Oh my God, Jesus that's Christ! Too. When it, like but it's how, very, the way they yeah. unfold that story, holy fuck! That's that'll hit you like a train, like a fucking train. Um, yeah. So 2016, La La Land would have been my pick. It's very funny if you go back and listen to our episode. We literally start recording and then we're like, wait, what? 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 Like, we literally were recording. We were going to talk about the Oscars and then they took it back and gave it to Moonlight. It's fun. Like, it's funny you have that story about it because I remember watching that and they announced a lot. Like, there was like a little bit of like they, they were like looking at the card together, the two people presenting. Yeah. And then they said, La La Land. And I turned it off and went to bed. Yeah. And then the next day I got up and there was it, like the whole big controversy. It was a good amount of time after they were all it, up on stage. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, um, now my, my return pick here, I'm going to go, let's rewind the clock to 1975. Damn. Let's rewind the clock. Oh, damn. I've oh, only shit. seen, I've seen one, two, I've seen four of the movies on this list. I've seen The Godfather Part Two. I've seen Chinatown. I've seen The Towering Inferno. So three. Sorry. 1975. Are you sure? Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm looking at the wrong one. S yeah, 75. <laughs> I've seen. Sorry. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Dog Day Afternoon, and Jaws. Now um, listen to me, everybody. Jaws. When I when Adam texted me about, it, he was bringing up his top five. Yep. Um, and I had to like really sit down. I'm like, if I could come up with a top five and I, I, on my phone, I wrote down a bunch of like movies that come instantly to top ahead. Looper, Interstellar, uh, Return of the King, movies like that. And then the one that always made it onto every one of my list, top 20, 15, 10, five was Jaws. It's one of the greatest movies of all time. It's a cinematic masterpiece. Um, Steven Spielberg's best film. And it One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, good movie. It's more cerebral, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I'm going with Jaws in 75 for best picture. I, I had read an article a while back about how, like, you know, what were the three that you named? Cuckoo's uh, Nest, Cuckoo's Jaws. Nest, Jaws, and Dog Day Afternoon. Right, and there's another one on there. What's it called? Barry Lyndon? Barry, Barry, Barry Lyndon, Lyndon. So I don't know what it's about. I don't know, I don't know it from any other movie, but I was reading an article saying that, like, that could possibly be the best year for best picture that's a stanley kubrick movie and like any you know yeah. stanley kubrick movie is gonna like you know make some waves as far as award shows goes it's so like that could possibly be the best you know year all time for mm -hmm. best pictures so just something to think about it, yes it, i totally agree jaws is incredible i watched it recently how many movies no matter when you watch them will totally change your out could change your outlook on life people can watch Jaws and still be scared of the ocean yes. in 2022. Yes. Which you should be. The ocean is terrifying. We don't belong out there. No, we do not belong out there. No. Nobody should be swimming in the ocean, number one. Getting eaten by a shark is a big fear of mine. <laughs> <You> well, <know? laughs> I mean, maybe it, some of it comes from Jaws. Maybe it doesn't, but I know that a lot of people out there are scared to go in the water because of the way that Jaws portrayed sharks. Mm -hmm. And the way they did it was great. And, and if you watch the documentary, which I highly recommend everybody do, on the DVD, and I think they have it now separately just on streaming services, there's a documentary, and they talk about what a pain in the ass the mechanical shark was to work with yep. on set. And so a lot of the scenes that don't have the shark in them, but you're seeing the shot from the shark's perspective, 
was forced because they the sh mechanical shark wasn't working that day and they were super over budget. Wow. And so they just filmed these um, these first person shots of the shock, but also the whole scene with the barrels <coughs> was all improvised because they couldn't show the shark fin. Wow. So they used the barrels. And it, it works and it, it works so way better. Well. It yeah. adds so much to it. So it's a great it, Jaws. All time classic. Should have won that year. Wow, I did not know that. Very cool, man. That's a great documentary too on Jaws. Yes. Uh, I forget what the name of it is, but it's a great. It's a, it. It basically makes the every like the way they talk about the mechanical shark. It's like it was w another cast member, and they're like, "What a fucking pain in the ass this asshole is." <laughs> it's like working with, uh, yeah. like I don't know, like a, but who's an asshole? Um, Die Hard. Well, what's like his name? Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis. Is an asshole. Yeah, Ed Norton. Well, even like the guy Quint, you know, the character, the actor who played Quint, like he yeah. was just like a raging alcoholic. Oh. <laughs> and, and another cool uh, thing about that is so. Um, that monologue about the USS Indianapolis uh, was written by uh, John Milius, who was one of the greatest mm. uh, Hollywood screenwriters of all time. He's since gone into like he's like ill, so he hasn't like been seen. But he wrote all of, like a ton, a ton of classics, and he wrote that for that character. So cool. Quint, yeah, there you go. All right, good pick, good pick, good pick, good pick, good pick. Back, uh, back to right, you, Ryan. So I'm going to go uh, more along the lines of now, you know, I would bump this. I would pick this movie over the movie that won Best Picture. Um, so I'm going to bring it back to the 1990 Academy Awards. Okay. And I'm going to I'm going to go with Field of Dreams. Um, Kevin Costner, classic. I'm a huge Costner fan. Uh, watching Yellowstone is kind of like brought out like just going back like he's he has a, a million fantastic movies he does um and field of dreams is just it, it's it's a cool sports movie in a way but it's really more like a family movie as well very sentimental um and the movie that won that year was driving miss daisy so ryan i which, have i have 1990 as dances with wolves winning best picture yeah i have 89 as the miss daisy but it doesn't matter yeah so it yeah, so, like, because the Oscars happened the next year. So, like, the movie came out in 89. Oh, I see. But it was actually the 1990 Oscars. Okay. So, like, if you if you search, like, 1990 Best Picture nominees, it's gonna, it'll be all the movies from 1989. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, it was the 1990s Oscars um, when Driving Miss Daisy won and Field okay. of Dreams was also nominated. Okay, yeah. Cause um, I, yeah, yeah, my list is year of film release. Okay. Okay, yeah, never mind. Right. Yeah, so I'm doing it based on when it won. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, with Field of Dreams, my second round pick. And you know, I'm bumping Driving Miss Daisy out of there. I've never seen it, but I'll allow it. Never seen it, but I'll allow it. It's, it's actually a decent. Um, that year was Dead Poets Society, Field of Dreams, Born on the Fourth of July, My Left Foot, and then Driving Miss Daisy wins. Cool. But I'm picking Field of Dreams. Adam, I've got so many options left. I have so many options left. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think. I, I want to do one where I, I don't think I'll do one where I can, I can, uh, actually, I want to save that one. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to do a, a classic, um, one of my favorite movies from the greatest trilogy of movies of all time. Uh, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers did not win Best Picture. In 2002, uh, Chicago won, which I've never seen. Um, but I do not know how another movie that year could be better than Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Also, Gangs of New York was that year. Yeah, all three of those movies, all three of the Lord of the Rings movies were nominated. Only Return of the King won. If Return of the King didn't win, oh my God. We, we got problems on our hands. But yeah. um, So, <clears throat> uh, you know, Matt and I have... have but we fawn over Return of the King. It seems like every podcast, but the Two Towers is an amazing movie in its own right. Like that bat, like that battle scene um, at Helm's Deep, like rewrote what a film could do in a battle. It was incredible. I remember I read like I read those books before. I read all three books before the second movie came out because I loved the first movie so much. Uh, but, like I think we were in eighth grade when when that one came out, and I was like. Waiting, waiting, waiting for that battle to read that battle in the book because I had heard about a big battle coming up in the movie and I was so psyched to see it on screen and it like it it played so well. 
um, on the screen. I'm a, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan, obviously. Like today, when I was working, I listened to Songs of the Shire in the background <laughs> while I was, you know, filing some invoices at work. So, um, Lord of the Rings Two Towers, my second round pick. The Return of Gandalf. The Return. Oh my God, Gandalf. The, I'm Gandalf the White. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess that's what I was called. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> um, let's see. My next pick, I'm going to go with, uh, I don't know if it's my, f- it might be my favorite Leo movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, uh, yeah. over 12 Years a Slave. So I watched 12 Years a Slave in theaters. I also watch Wolf in theaters. This is 2013. 12 Years a Slave is an amazing movie. Let's get that out of the way. I'm not. I'm not replacing it. I, I wish, you know, both of them could have won this year. But uh, and uh, for me, this this is the year that Leo should have won Best Actor. But wasn't that Dallas Buy- Buyers Club, Matthew McConaughey year? Yeah. Tough, tough to yeah. get past that steamroller. But the Wolf of Wall Street is probably my favorite Leo performance um, in anything he's been in. He's so charismatic. I love it when he uh, breaks the fourth wall and talks to the talks to the audience. Yeah. Um, I had read that it was supposed to be two movies at first, like the uh, like the rise and fall of yeah. of the Wolf of Wall Street, but they like Scorsese just jammed it all into one, and that's why it's super long. I feel like the fall on its own wouldn't have been as exciting as having those two together, right? Because it was, he was so high and then so very low to see it immediately. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. the the quick fall was really great. And um, what else was I gonna say? Uh, the most doesn't this movie have they have they say fuck the most times in any movie ever? Oh, I believe it. In this movie, I'm pretty I sure that's it. it. Um, they say that for a lot. So, Wolf of Wall Street, start the third round off. I'm looking at this up right now. Um, it's also a very long movie. The so Wolf, Wolf of Wall of Street is three. Oh, okay. But there's also a documentary called Fuck, okay. a documentary on the word, and then this other one called Swear Net. But both of those movies seem like they're meant Swear to. Swearnet is that the Trailer Park Boys people? Swearnet the movie. I don't yeah, know that's what, Trailer Park is Boys. Is it really? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. But yeah, Wolf of Wall Street. As far as big productions go, is number one at five sixty nine. Swearnet Ooh. says it almost double that nine hundred and thirty five times. I say the Holy word. Holy shit! Yeah. Even the documentary is at eight fifty seven. Oh, so Swearnet Net's number one. Yes. Okay, <laughs> that's hilarious. All right, Ryan, what do you got for round two? So I'm going to go back to, I mean, the way I have it is the year the awards were held. So 2003. Do you have, do you have the number of, uh, like, which Oscar it is? Which year? Which, uh, yeah, so the 75th. It was in 2003. Yep. So but wait. It, Adam's already. Adam's already. It was Adam's pick two ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the, Chicago, the one year Chicago won. The, the year Chicago won. I'm okay. going to go Gangs in New York. Um, I have, I've never seen the. What is it? What is it? Lord of the Rings. Return the of the movies. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. The two towers. The two towers. <laughs> Dick. I've never seen any of them, so I don't know how. You know, I'm sure they're fine, but um, fine. Gangs in New York. Besides The Departed, I think is my favorite Scorsese movie. Um, Daniel Day Lewis. Oh, God damn. Kind it. of like at the at, at the height of his powers, Leo. Um, and it's like a brutal movie, but it's also like a kind of a great character study, especially uh, of like Leo and Daniel Day Lewis's, you know, characters. So uh, sometimes Scorsese gets a little too into the violence, and he'll just kind of add violence in there for violence's sake. But mm. I feel like there was enough story to carry Gangs in New York because it's a long movie too. Yeah. But I remember I saw it in theaters, and it like blew me away. I had to get the DVD, and I've seen it probably a dozen times since. Um, and it, I've never seen Chicago, but I cannot imagine that Chicago like is Chicago good, better than Gangs in New York. Chicago is good, but but and I love musicals. It just doesn't do what La La Land did. Like it's like like it's a great musical, but for it to win that year over all the movies, like the one Gangs in New York included, that are in there, yeah, like that's that's just crazy to me. It's just like it's not be- it's not a yeah, I don't know. It, it's not better than those movies in any way, shape, or form. So, I'm also not a Richard Gere guy, so think how you will. Justine. Yeah, he's. Dick Gear. <laughs> Dick and Pretty Gear. Woman. Okay. So, so, yeah, I'm going with the Gangs of New York. Round three pick. All right, here we go. I got 
I got a, so many to pick from. So I'm going to go back to the 83rd Oscars. That would be the year the film's releases. Were, the films came out in 2010. So this year, a lot of good movies, decent movies. That year, The King's Speech won. Wasn't ah. a fan. Didn't like it. <laughs> Flat out did not enjoy didn't it. Didn't like it. There's so many good movies that were nominated. That I year. don't know what the reason for, like, the artist won one year. Is this very artsy, no pun intended, you know, silent movie. In, you know, and it came out in 2011. Okay, whatever, right? But this year, Aaron Sorkin wrote one of the best scripts. I keep saying one of the best, but it is. The dialogue in this movie is second to none. It is directed by David Fincher. It is The Social Network. It should have won that year, and it, it is one of the... It's one of the best movies of the last... Of this millennia, for sure. Maybe the last 30 years. It is, it is so important. It's such an important movie, and it's a good movie. Um, it, it talks about the creation of faith. Have both of you seen it? I've never seen it. You've never seen it? No, it's, on my, it's been on my what? Netflix list for That's like two Adam. years. Oh, it is, my God. I can't tell sin. you. It, might, it, it is like stormed up. Like Realistically speaking, it's up there. I don't think anything would pass how many times I've watched Pacific Rim, but- it is right there because I, I will constantly like Pacific Rim. I've watched a million times because it, it was on. Right. And I was like, I'll watch it. Just like the 2014 Godzilla. I'll watch it. Oh, but because it's on. Yeah. And I'll just put it on. The social network, I seek out on Netflix or I pull the DVD out of my, my off my shelf and I watch it like frequently, like three, four, maybe five times a year. I'll wow. watch it. It is so good. I can't like Jesse Eisenberg is tremendous in it. Uh, even. Um, God damn it. Andrew Garfield is so fucking good in it. And then you got Army Hammer is the Winklevoss, Winklevoss twins. Um, and why can't I think of it? Pre-cannibalism. Yes, pre-cannibalism. <laughs> and uh, Justin Timberlake. It plays uh, Sean Parker, the creator of Napster. Mm -hmm. It tells the story of Facebook, which is something that has irreversibly changed the landscape of pop culture and the internet, uh, whether we like it or not. And it's this like this great story in Aaron Sorkin. It's like it's so distinctly an Aaron Sorkin written movie. As soon as you listen to it, it opens up with him arguing with his girlfriend at this like very crowded Boston uh, bar. They they go to Harvard. It's just great. It, it's it's so good, and it should have won that year. The King's Speech is just not for me. This is the one where I could be like, I didn't like. I have no love for the King's Speech. Get it the <laughs> fuck out of there. And the Social Network should have won. It's crazy to me. So I so I didn't know that. Like I've just, I've, like I've said, I've never seen. I didn't know that David Fincher directed it. And I didn't know that Aaron Sorkin wrote it. And so now it's, like I said, it's been on my watch list on Netflix for quite some time. It's on now. Netflix. I like, I loved Steve Jobs, the Michael, Fa obviously oh, yeah. the Michael Fassbender. Right. So you get version. it. Yeah, yeah. That's but like the one. dialogue in that movie was incredible. Yeah. And so like if if it's anything like if the pacing of it and anything is anything like. Social network is anything like that, then I'm in, and I know I'll love it. It's funny you bring that up because I don't think I put two and two together because I love, like, I watch that Steve Jobs movie all the time. It's too. so good. I've only seen it once, but it was so good. It's just, it's just enjoyable to listen to that diet, the way he writes it. It's just so, it's very snappy and it's smart, it's quick. Um, I like it. Uh, I'm going to go with the social network in, at the 83rd Oscars. Then I'm going to go, so. The, let's see which one it was. Mm, yeah. I'm going to go just a year later. I brought this up already, but that the... Yeah, the 83rd... So 84th Oscars. The artist won that year. And mm -hmm. the artist, for for what it is, I, it's just something that the, the Academy liked. You know? It is what it is. It's a silent movie. John Goodman's in it. Great. Awesome. Um, the Help... Good movie. Hugo, take it or leave it. But I'm going to tell you, War Horse might have been John's. <laughs> um, War Horse. But that year, is in a movie I just watched recently, Moneyball. Oh, yeah. Moneyball was great. Fantastic movie. And maybe Aaron this Sorkin. is... Right. I was going to say, maybe this is just me. <laughs> really loving Aaron Sorkin written movies. But Moneyball is another one of those movies where I could, I could put that on a hundred times and just enjoy the way they talk. Like, I could literally probably... 
I could probably listen. I could probably watch Moneyball as a podcast and still enjoy it. I don't know. So yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Moneyball that year instead of the artist. So good pick. Back Very to you, pick. Ryan. All right, I'm gonna go to the 71st Academy Awards, uh, which took place in 1999. So the movies were from '98. Mm-hmm. Uh, that year. The Harvey Weinstein produced Shakespeare in Love won Best Picture. Uh, a lot of drama behind that win because of, you know, obviously everything that's come out about Weinstein, both being a sexual predator and like this incredibly intimidating presence. Um, so I feel like that had a lot to do with Shakespeare in Love winning because how the fuck does Saving Private Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Best I- Picture just for the opening scene alone. Right. I just don't. It makes absolutely no sense. I understand it's a war movie, and maybe that is why the Academy didn't pick it for best picture. But it it's one of, if not the best war movies ever made, with an unbelievable dynamite cast, and it's Spielberg like at the height of his powers. Yeah, yeah. It, it's such an emotional movie. Um, it has I, it all. One of my favorite movies. It has it all. Um, it's just an absolutely incredible movie, and the fact that Shakespeare in Love won over that is yeah. a goddamn tragedy. It's actually funny um, because that year released two like exceptional war movies: Save a Private Ryan, Save a Private Ryan, and Thin Red Line, which is a ooh, Terrence yeah. Malick, a Terrence Malick written and directed joint starring Sean Penn. That movie was also great, but for some reason, war movies don't really they don't get their due when it comes to the Oscars. Well, I mean, just to be nominated is is great. Yeah. So I mean, you're getting recognized. So I mean, if you're gonna recognize them and include them, just like it's it's pick, the, pick the right movie. one. I mean, if you look at the it's last, a big, it's a bigger achievement. Like it's, I don't get it. If you look at the last, like, you know, ten, fifteen years, nineteen seventeen. Um, what was the Christopher Nolan one? Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I didn't see nineteen seventeen, but I heard it was incredible. Great. Hacksaw Ridge oh, nominated, not unbelievable. picked. Unbelievable. Like all of these, American Sniper. I guess you would consider that a war movie. Didn't uh, did a, Apocalypse Now win Best Picture? No. No. no, that was another one that I no. uh, Deer no, Hunter no. won. I don't know. That's that's not necessarily a, a war yeah. That's movie, kind of like though. a post-war movie. That's yeah. No, there's some war, war in it, like PTSD. But, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's a, uh, war movies don't really get their due in the Oscars. Yeah, it gets the nominee, but never the win. So this 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 one really pisses me off. Um, <laughs> Saving Private Ryan is so good. Yeah, and it's got my name in it. You that's know? right. Saving I'm, I'm pretty sure when we were living together, Ryan, I walked in on you. At the tail end of Saving Private Ryan with somewhere between 15 to 18 empty beer cans on your nightstand. <laughs> just yeah, just I had chicken. one. Uh, I got an 18 of Bush Light bottles. And, we, you know, it was like 2, two, o'clock, two or 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. And we had our friend's birthday party that evening. So I took a shower and sat in my bed and drank 17 beers and watched Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> so many. I was, I was not a... Uh, <laughs> I was not very friendly at the party. I'll tell you that. Um, good pick, Ryan. That's yeah. a great one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, I still have a ton in here. I'm gonna go with like it's one of my. I've seen both of these in. I don't know if it, the Oscars were aired in 2017 this year. I don't know the number or when they came out exactly, but this year, Shape of Water won Best Picture. I like that movie. Um, it was a little weird for Jen's taste, but I enjoyed it. But Get Out is one of my, like I've said it on this podcast before, one of my favorite theater experiences, and I love that movie. It's so original. You're on the edge of your seat the whole time. There are you know moments where you laugh, and there are other moments where you're like, you feel smaller than an ant um, watching it uh, as a, you know, as a white guy, I guess you could say. Um, but... Just I, every time I hear Jordan Peele is coming out with something, I want to see it because of this movie. It was so, um, so original. I'm glad he at least won. He won best original screenplay for that that uh, for this movie that year. Um, and I, I can't pronounce his name. Daniel Kaluuya um, was incredible in it. Uh, even you know the the villain. Allison Williams played her part extremely well. The entire, you know, her entire family played their parts well. And just how everything was, uh, you know, I, I needed to see it a second time. 
I can't remember if I saw it twice in theaters, but the second time I like it has such a high replay value because you notice more and more every time once you know what happens in it. Um, and that's something that I really love uh, in movies is the is the rewatchability. Um, so with my the was fourth round pick, I'm going with Get Out. Uh, and the last one, let's see here. I'm torn between two. What years? Well, I have them. One is down as 2003, and the other one is 2009. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna. Thinking that you might pick it, Matt. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna leave you this one in case in case you pick it. But I'm gonna go with 2003, yeah. and I'm definitely not replacing the winner. Yeah. Lord of the Rings: you Return can't. of the King. You can't. One of the best movies ever. Yeah. Um, but also that came out this year was Mystic River. Um, like I, I read this book and I could not wait to see the movie. The performances are insane. Sean Penn, Kevin Bacon, um, what's his name? Tim, what's his name? Robin. Robbins. Tim Robbins from, he's in Shawshank Redemption. Um, the acting in this movie is unreal. Like you can, like you can feel Sean Penn's pain when he finds out that his daughter has been murdered when like the whole entire police force is holding him back. And like, you can, you can feel Kevin Bacon's struggle of him not want, like wanting to help his friend, but also like trying to do his job at the same time being pulled in, you know, three different directions. Um, probably one of my favorite movies as well. Uh, I can't, Dennis Lehane, I think is the author of this. He's like, I've, I've read a, a number of his books and watched a number of his movies too. Like he did that, uh, he read, wrote the book Live by Night that came out recently. Uh, the movie came out somewhat recently starring Ben Affleck, and I was so fucking charged up to see the movie, and the movie was just not fucking good. Not nearly as good as the book. No. Um, but Very disappointing. But Mystic River, the movie, delivers just as much as the book does. So my the, to start the fifth round off, Mystic River for me. Brian? Nice pick. So I'm going to go with, uh, so this was the 95 Oscars. So okay. movies came out in 94. I'm kind of torn because I, I do really like the movie that won Best Picture this year, Forrest Gump. However, I do feel that, especially how it's lasted, you know, since the mid-90s to present day, that the Shawshank Redemption should have won that year. Um, Tim Robbins, who you just mentioned, Morgan Freeman, it's, I mean, Forrest Gump's a classic movie too, but The Shawshank Redemption for me, uh, I don't know, it like stands the test of time. I think it's a better movie. It's not as, like, Forrest Gump's kind of silly at, at a lot of times. Um, and, like, if you kind of remove Tom Hanks from it, that movie's probably pretty terrible. Yeah, but definitely. I think the story is a lot stronger Ooh. in Shawshank. Tim Hanks. Tim Hanks. Um, in it's Hol it's one of Holly's favorite movies besides Battleship, which I can <laughs> include on this list because it, which I told her many times was not nominated for just, Best Picture. Just missed the cut um, that year. Just missed the cut. Frank oh, Darabont. Ariana? Frank Darabont also directed Green Mile. Um, another Tom yes, Hanks led role. So I it just see that's uh. That's his guy. But you're right. It's it, Without Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump falls very low. On, on And it's funny because um, so Tom Hanks wins this year, right? Or well, that year for Forrest Gump. Then you come back with the Green Mile, which comes in a, a close second to American Beauty. So, you know, Hanks is on both sides of the equation with these Best Picture nominees. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love um, Shawshank Redemption. And it, no slight to Forrest Gump at all. Um, but you know, it, it's a Stephen King story, you know, one of, one of the best that's been adapted into a movie. So, uh, great cast. Yeah. My, that's going to be my last round pick. Shawshank Redemption. Good one. Nice. So I really didn't have any stolen from me. I, I, two towers was on my list, but I don't even know if that was going to make my, my top Shawshank Redemption was on my list as well, but it wasn't really towards the top. Um, so I'm going to go with one. So the whole time I've been doing, you know, ones that I would have liked to replace. But let's go to the 2019 year of movies. So it would have been the 92nd Oscars. This year, Parasite won, which I can't deny. Great I've movie. seen, I saw all of the movies that year, which was, it was Parasite, 
The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Ford vs. Ferrari. Ford vs. Ferrari is something is a movie that I that I go back to time and time again. Uh, uh, oh my God, the director of Logan, Mangold, James Mangold, James Mangold. It's great. It's an American success. It's one of the great American success stories. And in like it, 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 I've talked about it before on this podcast, but it shows our ingenuity in uh, in the face of like utter defeat when Ferrari was winning Le Mans every year, and uh, Christian Bale. Matt Damon are both terrific in it. Great movie. That year, it, it, and Parasite was the winner that year. That movie was by far the best movie that I saw that year. Um, Jojo Rabbit. I don't know if you, either of you guys have it. seen that. Jojo Rabbit could have been that. Yep. The Irishman, with a little tweaking, could have been up there. It was long. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. The Irishman was a little long for my taste, but I still enjoyed it. Um, Joker. Joker was great. Really enjoyed that. Um, Todd Phillips. Really did a good job with that. And then 1917. 1917 was incredible. I'm dying to see that, but I can't stream it anywhere. I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and, and rent it for a night. 1917 was awesome. Like, a tr- like just like the scale. It's It blows my mind, these movies, like the scale that I wish they shoot them at. And like these big, long one shots and how many actors have to be coordinated in it. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and the explosions. and That's crazy. But Ford versus Ferrari, just the writing, the acting. In real life, Matt, Matt Damon is not a very convincing Carol Shelby. Carol Shelby was like six five. He had like long curly, like very like, like really? curly hair, <laughs> tight curly hair. Yeah, it didn't look like him at all. Christian Bale, on the other hand, looked like the like his um, face. God damn it, Miles, yeah, uh, Ken Miles know. looked just like him. Miles, Sounds yeah. just like him because he was able to sit down with his son and watch home movies and like uh, old interviews, and that's just what that's just the Christian Bale effect. Right. He'll, he'll bring that to your movie. And, but Matt Damon was, he was a believable, like, I believe the character. I believe that he was a American sports car maker. He started gotcha. from nothing, and he was just as badass as could possibly be. I just love that story in that, in that movie. So I would have loved to see that movie have one more than, I think it just won, I think it won editing and sound engineering or something like that. But best picture would have yeah. been, would have looked good on Ford versus Ferrari, if not for Parasite that year. Great list. So I've that's got- it. Uh, so I think the only like the only one I had stolen from me really was Jaws. If that had come back to me in the second and third round, I definitely would have picked it. Um, I had Joker uh, as an option, low option. Arrival over Moonlight, Whiplash over Birdman, Zero Dark Thirty, but not going to beat Argo. Uh, Another good war movie. Django, same year as Argo. Um, Inception over King's Speech. I thought you were going to go with District Nine. Over the hurt, like you know, instead I, of the hurt locker, the hurt locker like, rules, obviously. I liked hurt locker too much, and right. I do like District Nine, but yeah, hurt locker, I like too much. Uh, Fellowship instead of Beautiful Mind, um, Goodfellas over Dances with Wolves, uh, E.T. over Gandhi, Star Wars over Annie Hall, Taxi Driver over Rocky, some of the other ones I, I had. Yeah. Now, granted, I haven't seen both sides of the equation on these, but just you know, some movies that I really liked that I thought you know. Could have won Best Picture. I had in like one. I had Raiders over Chariots of Fire, but I've never seen Chariots of Fire, so right. I don't. I don't. I couldn't possibly know. Um, and then I think that was it. I got all my other top ones. I got you. You stole Mad Max from me, which is one. I of wanted. I, I wanted to get it out there because it's you know one of my favorites and yeah. it was up there. What about you, Ryan? Um. So for the eighty third, like the twenty eleven show, I had. Um, I know you pick Social Network, but I think The Fighter and Inception. I would pick over King's Speech, too. Um, it's a good one, too. Goodfellas. Goodfellas over Dances with Wolves at the 91 Oscars. I would I would have picked Goodfellas over that one. Um, I had Whiplash over... Burn so Man. I have it as over 12, 12 Years a Slave. But it might be based on... If you guys did it based on the year the movie came out. Well, I'm looking at. I'm, um, I yeah, have I, I have went, the Wikipedia open. That's where I went, and it's like it, it goes by like the one that won, and then all the other ones in the category. Right, that's the one I looked at. So on, well, which year was that, or what? Uh, so it was the. Let's see. Oh, rare. Right so it's the 87th Oscars. Birdman, and what, what was the movie you said you would have had over it? Whiplash. Whiplash. Yeah. yeah. Great movie. Yeah. 
Because 12 years, so the, the year before was 12 years of slave American hustle, Captain Phillips, Dallas Buyers Club, Gravity, Her, Nebraska, Philomena, and the Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, I think I, yeah, I raced a couple of mine, that's why. Um, and I also had Inglorious Bastards over the Hurt Locker, which I did like the Hurt Locker too, but I just love Inglorious Bastards. Yep. Um, and then a few good men, but how are you going to unseat Unforgiven? You know, it's yeah, tough. Unforgiven is oh. so good. I was when I, I, was, I watched <laughs> Unforgiven a couple weeks ago. Clint Eastwood leaves his home in the Old West, where anything could happen. A gang of marauders could come by. Just his two young kids just leaves them, just leaves them, and goes off and and does his thing. Just leaves them. You're not a good daddy. I mean, I, I think that was just what it was at the time. You get left, and maybe he doesn't come back. <laughs> or maybe he comes back and his kids are gone and they're dead. I don't know. <laughs> it's a tough life. A different time. Yeah. Nothing. Oh. Uh, yeah, that, that's mine. Cool. Awesome. That was the draft. Very good. Uh, we'll be back next week. We don't have anything picked for next week, but we'll, we'll figure it out next we'll week. figure something out. All right, let's yeah. talk about I what we're watching. The, I to the doc. Excellent. You're the best. I have an. I want to go first. I have an absolutely enormous list, okay. but I'm just gonna run through it and stop, like with little tidbits that I wrote down. So, all right. I watch Hawkeye. I watch The Eternals. Eh. Yeah. I, same. I burned through Succession. Loved it. I can't wait to rewatch it with Jen. I'm all caught up on Riverdale. The latest season was actually River Vale, and it was cool because it was like a Twilight Zone version of it. I'm out. I watched season two of The Witcher. Season three of You. I watched, I'm in season four of The Crown, which I thought I would like, and it's okay. It's just very slow. It's basically a, a dramatization of how much it sucks to be the queen. Like, she can't do anything that she wants to do. Everybody's always telling her what to do, and she's the fucking boss. I watched one episode with Lindy, the only episode I ever watched, and it was like some weirdo broke into the castle. Or oh. the, the fucking shit, I don't know. It was like a real story, too. I don't you know, know what really goes up my ass about The Crown? Because every episode there's like, you know... Out, like, you know, they, there's the disclaimers, like violence or whatever. Every episode that says there's nudity. There's never any nudity. They put it on there because of the paintings in the background at Buckingham Palace. Are you That's fucking kidding shit. me? That's some horse shit. <laughs> um, I watched Archive 81 at Holly and Ryan's request. Fucking loved it. Oh, shit. I still haven't started that. Venom 2. Pretty good. I watched Dexter. Stopped after season four. Didn't really blow my tits off like everybody said it would. <laughs> Uh, I watched the extended version, the four-hour version of A Hateful Eight during a snowstorm in one shot. It was fucking great. Um, Shang-Chi, Jen and I watched it. Jen thought the most unbelievable part of that movie was that they used bamboo for scaffolding in that part of the world. Not the dragons <laughs> or the magic. <laughs> That's the scaffolding. The soul-sucking demons? <laughs> no? <laughs> Don't Look Up. Don't Look Up was pretty good. Uh, I watched all of Yellowstone, loved it. Righteous Gemstones, which just finished up this past week. Hilarious. Can't wait for the next one. I rewatched The League. Gordon Ramsay Uncharted. Next Level Chef. Finale's on tonight. Can't wait to go home and watch it. Euphoria. Incredible. Um, French Dispatch. I watched that the other night. Have you What'd seen you that? Think? Yeah, I saw it. It was all right. It just wasn't what I expected. It was like five different stories. Joe and I went to go see that, and uh, I just it just didn't, it just like, it felt like, that like weird animation interlude in the middle of one of yeah. the stories felt weird, and that felt like it would might have been like they couldn't shoot during COVID, so they had to like turn it animated. Maybe yeah, because it really didn't feel like cohesive. Yeah, yeah, it was all right. The uh, cast was incredible. Incredible. Yeah, they, he he got all of his people there for that. He one. really did. Yeah. Uh, Only murders in the building. We finished that last night. I loved it. Um, can't get past. Sel I didn't know that's what Selena Gomez talks like. She talks. She talks like this. <laughs> it's so. Oh, it's man. weird. That's her act. That's her actress voice. Is it? Yeah, because she doesn't talk like that yeah, any other time. Just... Oh. She needs to sing. Yeah, if you listen to her in an interview, she doesn't sound like that. I watched the show on yeah, HBO, which I think you might be interested in. It's called Mrs. Fletcher, with uh, Catherine Hahn. It's the same. So it's a very different show than The Leftovers, but the same writer, and showrunner is Tom Parada. Is his name, and. Uh, it's very funny. Okay. Um, it's about this woman. She's a single mother. Uh, Ex-husband's a real dickhead. And her son is going off to college. And it's about, like, her life, you know, g getting her life back. And her son's life changing completely going to college. It's, it's good. Seven episodes, a half an hour each. Um, Book of Boba Fett was good. All the Lord of the Rings movies. 
<laughs> the Vow, The Last Duel, this documentary called The Puppet Master on Netflix, which I really liked, okay. um, about this piece of shit in England who, like, controls people's lives like an invisible hand and, like, tells them he's a MI6 agent or MI5, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Tells them he's an agent and, like, just extorts money out of them for 10 years. A real story? It's real. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a very good watch. Um, How I Met Your Father? Eh. Peacemaker, amazing. Yeah, I watched, Peacemaker, man. I watched this movie on Prime. I was telling Justine about it. It's called Frank and Michael Fassbender's Yeah, in. with the weird head. With the weird yeah, head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird. Yeah, weird. Yeah. But it was all right. Uh, Tick, Tick, Boom, the musical with Andrew Garfield. I fucking loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen any other nominees this year for Best Actor, but he was incredible. So he's got my vote. Free Guy, <laughs> which is on uh, HBO right now. Free Guy was great. Um, with Ryan, with Ryan Reynolds and Judy Comer, yeah. that's a that's a highly recommend for me. I watched Re Ready Player One recently because I just finished reading Ready Player Two, mm. uh, which was great. Um, I watched that documentary Free Solo, and this is oh really crazy, right? How can you like? How can you continue doing what you're doing if thirty to forty of your friends have died? Doing what you're doing. Yeah. Also, how can you that documentary crew? Um, I forget what his name. Jimmy Jimmy Chin. Yeah. Something Jimmy, like that. right? Jimmy. Something. Yeah. Fuck. What is that? Jimmy Chin or Jimmy Chu? Uh, he's a tremendous climber and documentarian. And they filmmaker. deserve just as much credit. As how him. could you? How can you do that? Number one, like the coordination of it. Number one. Number two, how can you do that while you're watching your friend like? He could fall at any moment and die. Done. You know what I and mean? You like, have to film him. Yeah, and die. you have to film him. So you have that footage. Like what like you know what I mean? I thought it was really interesting that he got like the cat scan or whatever and like the does not have fear in his brain. Yeah, it's that crazy. Person. He's nuts. <laughs> Alex Hanold, he's fucking a he's a lunatic. I was so I re I watched That's My Boy twice. It's, it's, it's so funny. I, I watched like the second half of it when it was on TV. I was dying, so I, it was Started on TV. Over, yeah. And so I like watched the whole thing on Netflix. And so Susan Sarandon plays, you know, the the older version of the woman that is t it takes advantage of him when he's a child. Yeah. And the actress that plays the younger version of Susan Sarandon is actually her daughter. I thought that was interesting. Oh, that is interesting. <clears throat> also, I told Ryan this the other day. When, so Adam it, was looking her up on Instagram. Oh, I was. <laughs> her net worth. <laughs> um, I was telling Ryan this the other day. When Andy Samberg got married, he invited Adam Sandler to the wedding. And Adam Sandler went to the wedding in character as... Uh, his dad. As his dad from That's this movie. That's hilarious. Which is great. And I love... I watched The Matrix 4, which I loved. And uh, finally, I watched, uh, like, my animal documentaries. I watched one called Wild Yellowstone. And uh, there was this one funny part. It was, like, bighorn sheep during mating season. And there's one big boss sheep that gets to, you know, bone all the lady sheep. And, like, how he asserts his dominance over the other male sheep is he'll, like, go up to them face to face and just sort of, like, flex on them. And then he'll go around to the side of them and kick them all in the boss <laughs> to show him who's boss. And, like, if somebody wants to challenge him to be the new big boss, they have to, like, headbutt until one of them gives up. But Damn. I love Animals are crazy. What a different world. And there was another one where, like, it was a mama elk protecting her baby elk from a predator. And she's, pr like, pr protecting her. What's protect their predator? A bear? Um, wolves. Oh, Okay. Um, and so, like, this pack of wolves is trying to get them, and she's fending them off, and they're running and running, and the wolves finally give up. Oh, sigh of relief. And then they cross this stream, and the baby elk gets swept up in the stream and goes down the river and dies. No! <laughs> yes. That's terrible. Yeah, like, it's one shot. You can see the wolves give up and then try to cross the screen. Boom. Gone. <laughs> Damn. Nuts. Wow. We're very lucky to be human beings. Yeah, I agree. So that's it for me. It's kind of long still, but I've watched a lot of shit. I um, kept track of it. I have, I have a, I definitely have watched more. I haven't kept good enough track of it like you have, but I'll go through it quick as well. So Shang Chi was great, loved it. That was another one of those movies where Marvel took a property, a Marvel property, and made me care about it. I had just, no interest in it, just like they did with Guardians of the Galaxy. So Shang Chi was great. Eternals, eh. Just couldn't understand how they eh. how they fumbled that. I just don't like. It. I I didn't care about any of those characters, and no. they're supposed to be like the most powerful beings in the universe. Couldn't no. care less. And also, the story was convoluted. Yep. And Kamal Nanjiani was just inexplicably not in the final battle. Just no. left. Just gone. Just left. No explanation why. Nope. Um, also, they would not have been able to stop Icarus. No. It's no no way. No yeah, way. No way. He no. could have done whatever he wanted. Yeah. Right. There's no way. 
Um, Peacemaker was tremendous. Yes. Way, it had no, so first of all, Suicide Squad, the, the uh, James Gunn one, had no business being as good as it was. And ten times that goes for Peacemaker. Exactly. A spinoff of this character that nobody knows and nobody, John Cena is like, well, James Gunn, terrific writing, like the show is great, he did a great job with it. But John Cena, man. He goes for it. He really the, brings it to life. He's so good. He's so the show is so funny. There's so many good laugh out loud moments. And the whole cast is great too. I, I love the v- vigilante character. The I vigil- think he's hilarious. He's so great. He's, he's insane. He's insane. <laughs> he's insane. Um uh Amanda Waller's daughter, I forget her name and what's her name in the show. But anyway, she's great. Um and Eagly. Eagly. Yeah, fucking anime. If fucking anything CGI happened to eagle. that bird, I would have lost it. I know. It's the, the the last episode where they're trying to get him to do something. Yeah. And then Vigilante's like, that's just like the worst thing about you is you overestimate <laughs> Eagly's abilities. <laughs> so good. Um, highly recommend that. Uh, Yellowstone, I I recently watched all three episodes, all three seasons leading up to season four. And then we watched through season four. It's just not, it's like, I like it. It's a good show. But they do a whole lot of substituting storyline for violence. They're falling in the sun's trap. And it's, n- yes, true, absolutely. And it's like not, it's just like, it, there's some episodes where I'm like, literally nothing of substance happened this episode. Yeah. Nothing. They should kill off, <laughs> they should kill off Casey's wife and son. I don't care. Oh my God. Kill she, them. She is I the, wouldn't care. If it wasn't for like how hot she was, she's, yeah. the balls on her to get in his face about like, Talking to another woman, like you were this fucking close to having an affair, lady. Yeah, yeah. Right. You just looked at that. Yeah, woman. they could bury them in shallow graves, and they wouldn't matter. To me. <laughs> no, it's like when they who was the lady um, on Walking Dead? They killed off that, that one of the season finales, and everybody thought they were going to be like everybody's like, oh my god, but nobody cared. It was like the the uh, mayor of the town. Oh, I don't remember. remember oh her? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, what the fuck? Mayor of nobody Alexandria. Ca- yeah, nobody, nobody cares. Shit, nobody cares about her. <laughs> That's the character you're killing off this episode. Um, right. We got so yeah, easy. it just has gone downhill. It started so strong. I still think Rip is the best character on the show. Yeah, Beth is get is being a little much for me. Oh, I love Beth. She's though. great, but it's just she, like her antics. It's just like I get it. I get the You're character. A bad bitch. Don't rub it in my face every episode, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hawkeye, tremendous. Great show. I really hope the character that they quote unquote kill off at the end, the no villain, way. is not dead. So we'll see. Um, not going to stop that money press. Night- Nightmare Alley was great. Was it? It was awesome. Ryan, you saw it? Not yet, no. Oh, my God. Both of you would love it. It's, it's, a re- it's I'm pretty sure it's a remake. Uh, could be. Guillermo del Toro. Um, it, yeah, it's on, it's on Hulu. You can, I, I, I do, I'm going to watch it soon. He loves, Guillermo del Toro just loves oddities. Mm. Like The Shape of Water, uh, Hellboy. He just loves oddities. And this movie follows... Uh, a guy who comes up in like the carnival circuit back in like 1920s, 30s America. It's great. Um, Bradley Cooper's great. Camp Bl- Kate Blanchett is great. Rooney Mara is awesome. Uh, and there's like a, like Ron Perlman's in it, his usual. Uh, Tim Blake Nelson, uh, <laughs> Willem Dafoe is very good in it. Oh, he, got a, he, got, he got all the hits in there. So uh, yeah, great. I loved it. It was like came out of nowhere. I mean, people were recommending it. It's, it's not nominated this year, is it? I think it might be. It's great. Yeah, it is. Is it? Yeah, it's great. It, yep. It's great. Um, I saw Book of Boba Fett. Loved it. You yes. saw all of it? Yes, all Ryan, of it. you haven't seen any of it? You don't care? I have not seen any of it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess you could say I don't care. Okay. Well, <laughs> it essentially was half half Mandalorian, half right. Book of Boba Fett, which I'm fine with. That was great. Right. Um, I did see, I saw yeah, one thing. On, I just. <sighs> go ahead, Ryan. This is my worry. Um, you know, I'm getting into Star Wars a little bit. I watched The Mandalorian. Cool. Now there's a new show I gotta watch. It's well, like, come on, Ryan. If you just let me watch what I want to watch. If you like The Mandalorian, just watch Book of Boba Fett because it's just there's. Oh, but then what's after that? It's more Magic. stuff. I mean, but that's but that's but you started watching Marvel. If you are worried about Star Wars, you shouldn't have watched Marvel. Yeah, you're all in now. You are yeah, done but, for. I know, but this has been a nice break. Now I got you know. Okay, Doctor we'll Strange take a break. Who's next? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can well, you watch the Lord of the Rings movies next or whatever. Book, but, <laughs> right. Well, that that's a whole other story. Book of Boba Fett is it was it was great the way they did it. I think they fumbled a little bit on the final episode with the the fight with like the the big last battle with the two large like yeah those two you know what I'm talking about. 
it was kind of weird. There was a little inconsistencies. Like at one point, the thing that Boba Fett comes in with rips one of their arms, and it's like, and in the next scene it has both its arms, and then in the next scene it's gone. There was a little kind of weird fuckery going on. Also, that dude doing the spin move, the weird, like all, very awkward spin move in the middle of nowhere. Didn't, oh yeah, didn't need to do it. That Why? was weird. Right, that was just a Robert Rod- Rodriguez thing. Um, but yeah, overall, I did like it. In theaters recently, I saw Jackass Forever. Ooh, how was it? It was I. It was the most I've laughed in a theater in a very long time. Wow. It's nonstop laugh. It's also, you see, conservatively speaking, 40 dicks. Wow. 40. That's a you lot see, of penises. You see one dick right off the bat. <laughs> like, the, the movie opens with a dick. It is very funny, and they do like a good job of mixing like these new characters that are part of like the Jackass world. Like, they I don't know what else they would be from, but they just kind of like mix them in. They're all people I've never heard of, but they just like mix them into like the different stunts and stuff. One of them's a chick, and she she was funny. She's pretty funny. Okay. Um. And yeah, I mean, it, there's one skit with Bam, and then other than that, he's not in the movie at all, wow. except for the credits, because they kicked him off set because he was coming late. He was fucking all fuck high and fucked up and he like wasn't showing up to shoots so they had to like cut him from the movie and he was pissed about it but you know I get it all those other guys now are sober and that's kind of like a thing they all do it's like they all just right, you know, keep each other in check yeah and he just like is all fucked up from when Ryan Dunn died but um, it was very funny it was, it was very good uh, definitely worth a watch when it comes out on like streaming services for sure uh, and then I saw Uncharted with uh, Ooh, Tom, how was it? Tom Holland and uh, Mark Wahlberg. It was good. Yeah, I mean, the the video game that it's based off of is a really good game. It is It is, like, essentially like Lara Croft and Indiana Jones, like, mashed together. Okay. That's essentially what, what you got with, like, the uh, the main character, Nate, which is played by Tom Holland. He plays a younger version of Nate. And his old grizzled sidekick... Played by Mark Wahlberg, which doesn't make any sense at all because it's like if you look up the guy that he plays, Sully, it's not him. Even if it was younger Sully, which it is in the movie, it still doesn't make sense. But it's a good movie. It's just like a very like fun, like popcorn, like action, kind of like treasure hunt like movie. I don't know. It was, it was good. It was yeah. good. It felt like one of the games. Like go, go, they took a lot of spots from a bunch of the games and melded them all together. So there's like a lot of cool things, and it's like. You know, old tunnels and keys and is crazy shit like that. So it was good. I liked it. What about you, Ryan? That's it for me. Um, so, yeah, a lot of – I'll have a lot of repeats. Um, so for movies, I watched um, Don't Look Up. I thought it was, it was pretty good. I was kind of surprised it was nominated for Best Picture. Like, I didn't think it was – like, I understand the message was important, but I didn't feel like they pulled it off that well, especially with that cast. Um, I watched Power of the Dog with Benedict Cumberbatch and Jesse Plemons and Kirsten Dunst. It was good, but again, another one of those, definitely a movie made for like Oscar bait type of Mm -hmm. thing. It was good. Literally nothing happens. I mean, absolutely nothing happens um, until the final scene of the movie. And it like, it's very pretty, you know, it takes place in, I think it's like 1920s or so um, on, like, the West, you know, West Coast, like, Montana or something like that. So visually, it was a very pretty movie. The acting's very good, but nothing happens. <laughs> um, so if you're into those type of movies, and I'm sure there's a lot of hidden meaning I missed and, you know, all that, it's worth a shot, but I, it, it didn't really uh, grab my attention. We watched a movie called No Exit on Hulu. Um, it was based on a book. I don't know if it was of the same name, but it's kind of like a... Like a, it's like a murder thriller type movie. So it was based off a book that Holly really enjoyed. Um, and it takes place at a visitor center in, I think, Utah. And it's during this, like, huge blizzard. So there's, like, five people in this visitor center, and they're just trying to, like, outlast the blizzard. And then all this stuff st- starts happening um, where, like, people aren't who they say they are. Some people are connected with others. It was it was actually very well done and very interesting. Um, just kind of like a good, like mystery murdery thriller movie. Oh, cool. Uh, called, I, I, yeah. I, I see the advertisements for that. And I like, you know, joke around with Jen, like, Oh, you want to watch no exit thinking it's like a scary movie. But if I tell her it's like a mystery thriller, she'd definitely be into that. 
and it's better than like those B C movie, you know, like you find them all the time on like Hulu and stuff. Like it was it was actually a well done movie. Yeah. Like you'll you'll enjoy it. It wasn't it wasn't like a throwaway. Uh I can't remember if I watched any other movies since we've last podcasted. Um so I'm just gonna pop into my T V shows. Uh so Righteous Gemstones, Euphoria, uh both of them just ended their season twos. Great seasons, fantastic seasons. Um, both on, they're on back to back Sunday nights on HBO. HBO's like their Sunday night shows can't miss. Um, I've read something also, today, Ryan, that Euphoria is not coming back till two, 2024. I, I mean, I believe that just with like the production value that goes into that. I mean, it, it must take them a while to film it. And like, and I, who knows with Zendaya's schedule, right? That, that would, that was my guess to it. Um, but yeah, those, those shows, if you haven't watched any of them or haven't watched the new seasons, um, Adam, I know you backed me up. They were both great. Amazing. Love for this season. Yeah. Uh, Peacemaker, like I echo everything you guys said. It's so good. I love the, it's the only show where I don't skip the credits. Yes. And I know that yeah. James Gunn, his point, but it's so good <laughs> every time. I love it so much. Robert Patrick as John Cena's dad. <laughs> the white dragon. Like that insane white <laughs> The white dragon. Such a scumbag, but so good. Um, I like that. Peacemaker. Because they killed him, right? But it seems like he's going to be back in some sort of spirit form. Yeah, some capacity. Forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of the cool part. And like those type of shows too, like – you take away the criticism of like, oh, that doesn't make sense. So that's not realistic because it's it's a wild show. You can just actually enjoy it and be entertained. Right. But with James Gunn involved and with how good scene has been, like it's actually good stories as well. Um, watch season first half of season four of Ozark. Oh yeah. Which I enjoyed. I think Jason Bateman's. I've, I was texting Adam about this today. I think he's a little bit in over his head from an acting perspective um, with all the shit that's happening in Ozark, mm. his character is going through so much, so much is happening to his character and he's shrugging it off. <laughs> there's no emotion. There's no urgency. Right. He's not, he's not cracking it off for me. I, I no, feel like I, I, it's yeah, I watched that as well. And I, I feel like the whole yeah. thing is, a, is in over everybody's head. Right. Like all of a sudden now the sun is, is doing, is, is laundering money. It's like, do you not realize the situation that you're currently in? Like death. Like, everybody's dying around you. Nobody yeah. seems phased. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I like yeah. it. But and it's like, nobody like... seems phased about anything that's going on. <laughs> how, like, I told right. Ryan after I watched the first episode of the new season, like, how the fuck does this son think that this is a, how can he think that this is a good idea? Right. I don't know. Like, it makes no sense. And, like, uh, he's supposed, he was, like, in the first season or two, you were led to believe that he would be the smart, rational one. And the daughter was the Shit, yeah. erratic one. Right. But now they've sort of switched roles a little bit, and he's like, you know, he thinks he's he thinks he's hot shit and Mister Righteous. And I, I was actually telling Ryan to like it, another sort of side of this is like, it's not a criticism in any way, but like Ruth is obviously furious that her cousin was murdered. Yeah, what the fuck did you think was gonna happen? Yeah, right. You tried. Yeah. You tried to tell yeah. him so yeah. many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how insane she is. That yeah. woman's fucking out of her mind. Yeah, like. You had to see it coming, this line of work. It's not like, yep. I don't know. Everyone near her or who associates with her dies. That's just how it goes. Because of her. Also, I don't I don't buy it all that they can just, like, on a whim, whip up a meeting with the FBI. Right. And have all these demands. Right. Look, you're not getting any of these demands put through. Like, that doesn't. that's not how it happens. Yeah. I, I also, I, no. like, obviously I've never been involved in a Mexican drug cartel. Or have you. But I can't imagine that the head of a cartel in a million years would ever make a deal with the FBI. Like, to get out, right. To yeah, get yeah. to get out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. they would to like to move freely. Yeah. But to get out is not possible. Yeah, right. It is not possible. Right. I mean as far as I think, you know, yeah. I would think. So part two of that season is coming later this year. Yeah. But that'll be the end. And so are we are think we think next month. Is it next month? Yeah, Holy sorry. shit. Yeah, it's April. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, so that scene, the scene that the, sh the season starts off with, with the car accident. Yeah. Like, we haven't caught up to that yet. Right, 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 right Okay. Right. Just wanted to make right. sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I've been watching, I watched 1883, just ended, which is fantastic. Um, that's like Taylor Sheridan wrote that, and it's like the John Dutton's, like, ancestors mm -hmm. story. Um, right. So I think it would be like his great-grandfather. It was 
Mm. Excellent. Excellent. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, Mayor of Kingstown was really, really good with uh, Jeremy Renner. Um, watch Yellow Jackets, the, the show on Stars, which was awesome. Like the, the all female cast. Um, really cool story and really well acted and just like a lot of cool twists and turns. Uh, I would highly recommend that. Do you have to watch that on Stars? No. So I have a website. Like it's where you can like stream it. It was really good. Um, so good. I can send it to you if you want. Yeah, I've got so, a lot of. Uh, it's either Stars or Showtime. I think it might be Showtime. Um, yeah, I think you're right, right. But yeah, we didn't. I didn't do the. I didn't like buy Showtime, so I just watched it off of a website. Nice. Um, Archive Archive eighty one, which is really good. Matt, you'll love it once you watch I it. I know. I gotta yeah. watch it. I gotta watch it. Uh, watch The Witcher, which I had never seen before, so I watched both seasons. Awesome. Right. Henry Cavill is fucking man. Just yeah. A, just a great, cool great like show. mindless dude show. Based off a great game yeah. by the same name. Yeah. And uh, Murderville. <laughs> the oh Arnett. yeah. <laughs> Did you watch Comedy. that, man? No, I didn't see it, but Ryan, you said it was great, right? Uh, yes. The Conan episode and the Kamal Najahani episode are fucking so good. Yes. Matt, there's – so I watched it, and Ryan and I were going to Beer Fest the next day, and I texted Ryan. I said, Ryan, I'm going to need you to watch the Kamal one before before we go tomorrow because <laughs> he does something that I'm going to be doing all day. Okay. <laughs> something he does is, I gotta watch is it. very I gotta funny. Watch it. Has Justine watched it? Yeah, and that's it. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think she has. Yeah, I don't know if she's seen all of them, but yeah. Did you guys know that? Um, I can't think of his name. Tim, the guy who did why I think Meadows. you should leave. No. Oh uh, yeah, Tim Robinson. Tim Robinson. Uh, he, Robinson. He got a show greenlit on HBO with his writing partner. Yeah. Called did, Computer School. I did. <laughs> if yes. They're better to do the clown pewter in there. <laughs> If I, I'm so excited to learn more about it, but I'm like, that's an instant watch. Yeah. Instant. Has to be. Anyway. Very good. That's everybody's? That's it. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Monster episode this week. Huge. Lots well, of packs. Yes. We're, we're, we're getting back to normal next week. We'll hopefully all three of us will be here and we'll do a, uh, we'll do a more pared down list because we'll have watched less between now and next week as opposed to today and four months ago. So <laughs> Yes. So that'll be good. Um, great. So averagenobodies.com, youtube.com slash the average nobodies, average nobodies on Twitter. Hit us up. Um, and that's it. You guys have anything else you want to shout out? Cool. Hey, well, so. we're going to see the Batman tomorrow. Oh, fuck yeah. All of are. us. And we are collectively rock hard. Rock hard. Yes. <laughs> Can't wait. Hopefully, Mike D makes it back. Yep. And we can, uh, <laughs> we can talk about that one next week. Yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That'll be a big jump next down. week. Can't wait. Um, Cool. All right. See you guys later.